If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. Hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner, and welcome to Ask the Doctor. This is our 11th season, and it's great to be with you tonight. As you know, this program was, assisted, was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. It is more important than ever, especially in this media age, to become an informed patient, and we are here to bring you timely health discussions. For those who are new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. One, you can call the live phone line, and two, you can visit our website, netny.net slash doctor. You could submit questions and opinions via the forum. To give you more chance of getting your questions in, we are now using Twitter. Submit your questions via twitter.com, sending it to the net at Net New York. That's www.twitter.com slash Net New York. I'm new to this too, so let's try together to work this out with the Twitter stuff, okay? Now for this episode, I have Dr. Reginald Manning, orthopedic mes medicine attending at New York Methodist Hospital. Dr. Bruce Garner, Chief of Rheumatology at Lutheran Medical Center, and Dr. Emil Bakesh, Geriatric Medicine Attending at New York Methodist Hospital, Medical Director of Bishop McGovero Center for Geriatric Care, and also President of the Medical Staff at New York Methodist Hospital. So welcome everyone. I have a little cold today, but I'm delighted to have this all-star cast, because if this were baseball, this would be an all-star team. Yeah. <laughs> These are people that have been on this show. Some, I think Dr. Bakesh, about 12 times, 10, 11, 12 times. Perhaps. I run into people on the street, they're looking for this, this crew, Dr. Manning, Dr. Garner, and Dr. Backer. So it's a great crew, so my voice may go, but I have no worries here about this. Uh, but it's been a big week in the news. So let's try and go through the news quickly, and then we'll get to the quiz, and we'll get to the show. So first thing is, if you love chocolate, you might be depressed. And people say, well, I thought chocolate was good for you, you know, that it, it, it gave you um, antioxidants and made you feel better. And it turns out people who are depressed eat 55% more chocolate than those who aren't depressed. And I'm not sure what it means, but it could mean that if you find yourself eating a lot of chocolate, you might be depressed. And that's something uh, when you go to the doctor, you say, I find myself eating a lot of chocolate. And that doesn't mean you are depressed, but it might lead him in a certain direction. So it's something that we thought was interesting to bring up. I know a lot of people like chocolate out there, um, but it's interesting. Now, another thing that, warning, exercise may cause you to gain weight. Very bizarre thing, because you think you go to exercise, you eat right, you're going to lose weight. Well, that's half true. If you eat right and you, you take in fewer calories, you will lose weight. But turns out that exercise actually stimulates your appetite. When you run um, and you do, you do a hard workout, the brain puts out chemicals that makes you hungry. So people do a, a half-hour workout, they lose 300 calories, and then they go and have a Starbucks, a muffin and coffee, and get back 500 calories. So that seems to be that exercise, and particularly vigorous exercise, is not the way to go to lose weight. Definitely is good for you as far as blood pressure and heart disease and diabetes. But if you want to lose weight, there's no substitute for taking in less food. So I hope that um, those who are out there saying, how come I keep exercising, I can't lose weight? This study was very dramatic and showed that people just didn't lose, lose weight when they exercised. There was another story today that talked about four habits that age you by 12 years. And it's something that I, th I think is common sense, but it turned out that these four together took 12 years off your life. So if you're doing any one of these, you may want to think about it. Now, smoking we always talk about, no, no great revelation. But drinking too much, and for men that's more than three drinks a day, and for women more than two drinks a day. The third thing was inactivity, and that was less than two hours of physical activities per week. And when you added that with poor diet, that's eating fruit and vegetables under three servings a day. If you put those four together, it takes 12 years off your life. So it's something to think about with the people you love and you want to be around. And these are things that are not hard to deal with. We're not talking about things that, you know, you have to go and do this workout every day like a maniac. These are four things that are easy. Stop smoking, diet, um, inactivity, and just to control the alcohol level. Now, another thing was laughter. Everybody likes to laugh. I know Dr. Manning knows a few good jokes. Maybe he'll give us this uh, jokes. <laughs> but... Laughter may actually be the best medicine because it turns out that laughter, when you have a good laugh, it reduces um, your, your stress hormones, 
reduces your blood pressure and also bad cholesterol. And it found in this study that was released today, it can be as healthful as exercising, jogging around the, the track. So you get a better mood, makes your ability to fight um, disease and your immune system gets heightened. So it's something that it's easy to do and it's good. So I thought tonight, actually, if we had short jokes, if any of the viewers out there have a short joke that can make, um, make us laugh in under a minute, that we'd give a special plaque out to that and we'll figure out. And I'll open it up. I, I thought of one, actually. It was a guy and a dog go into a bar. <laughs> I'm going to keep this. He goes over to the bartender and says, you know, my dog can talk. Can you give me a free drink? So the guy says, if you show me a dog can talk, I'll give you a free drink. Brings the dog. He says, what do you call that thing on top of a building? The dog goes, roof, roof. Okay. The bartender gets angry. You know, you can see. He says, what do you call the sandpaper when you do that? Roof, roof. Bartender gets so furious, he picks the guy up, throws him out. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. He says, one more thing. Who's the greatest baseball player of all time? So the dog goes, roof, roof. The guy picks him up, throws him and the dog outside. They're lying on the street. The, the dog turns to the man and said, maybe I should have said DiMaggio. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I missed whole joke, but I figure I'd make it easy for the rest to tell a funny joke. So if you have one, anybody on the panel, I, I want to hear it. Now, look, we help people. They didn't have to jog once around the back. Yeah. Quick laugh. <laughs> so that was, <clears throat> and then you get this endorphin rush from exercise. So that, now, last but not least, are you addicted to shopping? And I'm just going to read these off. Anybody out there at home, see if these ring a bell. Do you get high when shopping? Do you feel lost if you don't have your credit cards? Do you feel guilty or embarrassed after you've gone on a shopping trip? Do you lie about how much money you've spent? Do you shop when you're angry or depressed or lonely? Do you argue with those that love you about shopping, about your shopping habits? Do you obsessively think of money? Do you spend a lot of robbing Peter to pay Paul to cover your shopping sprees? Okay, I see a few hands going up. Keep your purchases secret to avoid being made fun of. You have lots of unopened packages around the house with useless things that you, you shouldn't have even bought, but you did. If you answered yes to four or more of these, you may be addicted. And this addiction is a serious addiction, similar to drug or alcohol, actually in the same part of the brain. So it's something you can discuss if, if you know anybody out there watching at home shopping network all the time making these purchases. It could be a serious problem. These, I also put these on the website if you want to review them at uh, netny.net slash ask the doctor. Okay. Monsignor Bennett, I want to recognize. He missed this last week. It was the first week since the show started, but Monsignor had to travel, but he's back this week. Good to see you, Monsignor. Now, last week's quiz, which was done through the internet, what was the letter I appears six times in this English word? The letter I appears six times in this English word. What is it? The answer, indivisibility. And the winner, none other than Rosemary Nealon of Maspeth, who I think a previous winner. And Rosemary, we want to congratulate you. We'll get the plaque out. The, the puzzle master is busy. Linda Lapatosa making the plaque for next week. Now, this week's quiz, though, I think the puzzle master gave us a very good one. Albert Einstein, the brightest, one of the brightest people who ever lived, referred to this as the most complex thing in the world to understand. What was it? Okay, the, the most complex thing in the world to understand. We'll take a short break now. When we come back, we're going to go right to the phones. So we have orthopedics, rheumatology, general medicine, and geriatric medicine. The number is 718-499-6101. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are orthopedic medicine, rheumatology, and geriatric medicine. So, let's see who's number one. Could it be Maddie? Could it be Joel? Who could this be on line one? Let's see right now. Hello, who is this, please? Hi, this is, this is Jane from Middle Village. Jane, hi, you're actually our first caller of the day. Yeah, I know. You, you, yeah. you called in early. You beat Maddie out here. Very good. <laughs> so, well, I'll remember, get, remember yep. I told you I have the bloating? Yes, yes. Well, how is that working out? Nobody found out what it is yet. But I went to the endocrinologist, uh -huh. and uh, for some reason they said my um, IGF growth hormone okay. is 349 instead of 150. Okay, so... So um, they sent me a neurologist. <laughs> they did a brain scan. Yes. They thought it was coming from the pituitary, but it's not. Very good. So it's not... You know, I, if I recall, just give us a quick synopsis. I remember you were having bloating, and you, right? And it's very severe constipation. Right, and we, uh, nobody could find any kind of reason for how no, old are you, Jane? Sixty. 
60. Anybody do you think have I have? Do you think I might have gastroparesis? Uh huh. Well, when it, I mean, it's like sure. the back is to start. Oh, it's possible gastroparesis is a condition where the patient has delayed gastric emptying, so the stomach doesn't empty as quickly as it as it should, and it's usually a form of neuropathy. It's often found in diabetics, but it can occur in other patients. So there is treatment for that, and and if you've had a complicated workup already. There, there's a test that can be done as a nuclear medicine study where they do a gastric emptying study, or your doctor could just simply give you a um, empiric treatment of some medication. There's several medications that will increase gastric emptying, and it might be worth a try. But why do you think um, my uh, hormone is, is so high? I, you know, hormone tests sometimes are nonspecific, and they can be elevated, not meaning that that's the primary disorder. So. You know, I think the fact that they didn't find any anatomical abnormality um, eliminates that possibility. So I, I would check with the endocrinologist, um, who would be much more adept at answering the Very question. Good. Jane, thanks a lot. And also get out there and exercise. That will also help. I do. I do. Thank you. Very good. Have a good day. Thanks for calling. Thank Have a good day. We now go to Joel. on line. Joel? Oh, hi, Dr. Garner. It's just Joel from Massapequa? This is Joel from Massapequa. Massapequa has to watch on the computer because <laughs> yeah. we don't have a TV out there yet. No, I'm watching on the computer tonight. Do, do you, um, what's, I what's like going on? I like chocolate. You like chocolate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very, Very uh, do you feel like I'm just a little depressed maybe? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I need to laugh more, I think. They gave us a good laugh though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that dog joke is funny. <laughs> <laughs> if it's told correctly, it could be a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what can we do for you tonight? You always have an interesting question. So one of my sisters has um, Crohn's disease, and she has this bad back pain. She's had it for a long time, and they told her it might be some joint, some joint problem with her back. And um, I think she's tried some, some stuff, some medicines. And is there anything else that could be done for that bad back pain? Let me, let me start with our rheumatologist, because we. Oh, well, that's that's very possible. Crohn's disease is seen often in association with arthritis, um, inflammatory bowel disease type arthritis. And the most common type of back pain we see is what's called a spondyloarthropathy. By the way, just to cheer you up, I was at Stop and Shop with my wife before she went shopping. I think she has all of those shopping addiction <laughs> things. We, we're at Target for the new Zach Posen um, line, which came out on Sunday. But um, Hershey's, the special bar is three for four dollars, Joel, so I'm sure there's still plenty there. But um, in terms of the arthritis, she needs to have a workup and see if she has this thing called spondyloarthropathy. And there what are is that in English? Spondyloarthropathy means fusion, essentially, of the sacroiliac joints and the bones in the back. So there's a stiffness and a pain because you literally can't move. In its worst case, the bones start to look like a bamboo tree because the bones are each connected to each other. And that can cause a great deal of pain and it can cause a great deal of difficulty in moving and stiffness. There are newer medications such as Embrel and Umira which help a great deal with this. Other things such as anti-inflammatory medications, if your sister's allowed to take them, if it doesn't affect the Crohn's too much, can be very helpful such as naproxen or ibuprofen. Joel, okay. I hope that helps. That does. It sounds Thank like there you. may be some connection, and you want to get in and see a rheumatologist. Okay, I'll let her know. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Take care. We're now going to go to Myra. Hi, Myra. Hi. Where, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from the Brownville section of Brooklyn. Uh, any good restaurants open up lately? We're always trying to see. Not, not much in Brownsville opening up food-wise. No. 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 So where do you go when you, when you decide you and your um, significant other want to go out to dinner? Well, usually to Manhattan. Manhattan. Good, good restaurants uh -huh. in Manhattan. You know, yeah, you could eat in a different restaurant for every Manhattan. meal and never get well, through. We do have a Red Lobster here in Brooklyn out by, um, not too far from Star Red City. I forget what they call the area. Oh, that Erskine Street? Uh, that's a new yeah, exit. that's it. That's it. What do they call that area? Um, oh, boy, I know, too, but I can't think of it at the moment. Uh, if you, somebody, one of, our call, one of our listeners, if they can call in, it's in the tip of our tongue mm -hmm. here. But what can we do for you tonight, Myra? I'm laying here suffering with vertigo. Oh. And um, I've been doing eye exercises and head exercises, but it makes me... So I just wanted to know if there were any suggestions. Mm. Mm. Tough one. Vertigo. Well, vertigo 
is, uh, means dizziness, usually room spinning, and uh, can be due to many things. The, the inner ear is what usually governs the feeling of, of balance and, and vertigo. So in each inner ear there are three semicircular canals and they, they have fluid in them. If one of the tubes gets clogged, you can lose orientation in space and you can get very dizzy. So it can be caused by excesses of uh, caffeine, alcohol, chocolate, actually also any stim stimulation and stress or infection. But a common cause as well is damage to the acoustic nerve, the nerve that goes inside the ear. So um, there are several tests that you can tested? do. Well, I have a balance test um, last Thursday. Right. It may be called something else, but that's where they put the hot air into your ear and the cool air. Yeah, they have what's called video nestigmography. They, they take uh -huh. videos and they watch your eyes move while they stick the cold and, and the warm right. air in the ears. Yeah. Um, that's helpful to tell if it's central or peripheral, but it, it still doesn't give you the exact cause. So, oh. You know, unfortunately, I don't think a lot of times you do find yeah. the exact cause. There's a maneuver, the Epley maneuver. Or the, the Epley maneuver is man maneuvering the head in different orientations to try to bring the crystals, the autoliths, back into okay, the well. Okay, so that's what I was doing a little earlier also, um, head yeah. exercises. Yeah, they have home exercises where you change position. Does it come from washing your hair and also with water going into your ear? Because I don't drink or anything, and I'm not really a chocolate lover because I'm diabetic. Uh -huh. Well, um, diabetes can also affect the nerves, and it can increase oh. your... Yeah, that can happen as well. So there's well, also uh, there's some unusual illnesses right. that can cause it, too, and you would check with the ear, nose, and throat doctors. Sometimes they ask for imaging studies of the brain. But, Myra, it's oh, great to hear okay. from you, Myra. All right, then. You call us back next week. Let us know how you're doing. Oh, I will. Okay. Be well. Bye. Take care. Let's go. Before we go to a break, let's go to Bruno, who's been waiting patiently. Hi, Bruno. Hi. How are you? How are you doing? I'm doing great. Where are you Good calling you? us from? Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Bensonhurst. I love that place. Um, what's that? that? It's sort of like a pizza place, but it, next door it's got like a regular um, restaurant. Always black. Gino's? Oh, L&B. Gino's. Oh, Gino's. Oh, yeah. Gino's. Okay. Isn't that a nice place? That's a nice place. I know which one you mean. Absolutely. Very crowded on a Saturday night. You can't oh, get in there. Lines are outside the door. Amazing. So what can we do for you? How are you feeling? I'm doing great. I'm calling for my mom. This is for Dr. Garner, who my, uh, takes care of my mom. And recently he went to, she went to see him regarding some pain in her elbow. And he came up with an interesting diagnosis that I never thought of uh, regarding an x-ray for uh, a pinched nerve in her neck. And that was something I never thought of, and the doctor was uh, on target with that. And I thought he, the audience would be interested in hearing about that. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Bruno. Thank you. And I'm going to take that into consideration next time with the copay. I appreciate the plug. <laughs> um, well, quite often people don't realize they have pain which comes actually from a pinched nerve in the neck, but it doesn't hurt you where the nerve begins. It hurts you where the nerve travels to. And with Bruno's mom, what we did was we looked and we saw the range of motion. We checked to see, and I'm sure uh, uh, Dr. Manning can certainly comment on this also. We checked to see whether there's anything wrong with the elbow on physical exam. There was nothing coming from the elbow. And then we asked her, she had more of the pain in positional, to, uh, different positions. And it was related to the neck. So you always have to think, if you have pain coming down the arm or going into the hand, or possibly a pinched pinch nerve. I'll, I'll turn it over Dr. to my colleague. Manning to jump in and... Pa patient comes to you with pain in the elbow. What are some of the things you would think of and how to work it up? Well, I would think of um, um, <coughs> perhaps tennis elbow, the tendonitis as you can get, or golfer's elbow. What is that tennis elbow exactly? That's a lateral epicondylitis where you get inflammation on the outer part of the elbow, and golfer's uh, elbow is uh, the medial part. Uh, you get overload, overuse the tendons, and they get inflamed. But typically with um, neck, um, we call it radicular type symptoms. The pain may run from the neck down the arm, and you may get a what we call paresthesias, burning, numbness, or tingling. And as they said before, maybe positional. You put mm -hmm. your neck in certain positions, it can aggravate that. And then you have to look for the cause. Is it a, a, a slipped disc? Is it a bone spur, thickened ligaments, um, arthritis? Anything that could lean on a nerve can give you um, these abnormal symptoms. So if, if somebody's at home experiencing symptoms of elbow pain, how long should they wait to, you know, should, what could they do at home before they go to see you? Well, if, if it's just an inflammation, I would start with an anti-inflammatory like Advil or Aleve mm -hmm. and give that a couple of days. Maybe a little heat, a heating pad might work as mm -hmm. well. And um, try to observe the positions you put your arm in and if that affects it or not. If that doesn't take care of it, then you may have to start to look higher up uh, the nerve, uh, nerve uh, back, back to the neck. Stuff. Yes, sir. So, Bruno, thanks for bringing this topic up. 
We hope to hear from you soon. You have a great informative show. I enjoy it every week. Appreciate it. Much. Take care. Let's see, we have Peter on. Peter. Yes. How are you doing? Hi, pretty good. Where are you calling us from? Flushing, New York. Flushing, you, you have a little joke for us? Uh, uh, no, not really. A little camera shy. Okay. <laughs> I can't see well, what's going on out there food wise? Uh, food wise. Let's see, you, you asked LA from Brooklyn. Uh, what's going out there uh, food wise? Uh, the only thing I could think of besides uh, fast food is... Yeah, I've eaten in Flushing, too. I had the same feeling that uh, Peter's <laughs> got. Uh, well, Flushing, uh, uh, in Forest Hills, there are some uh, Vietnamese and Thai, Thai restaurants I saw along. All right. About, I can't think of their name, so... But anyway, um, what can we do for you? Okay, basically, I have a condition called uh, multiple sclerosis. Okay. And it being a uh, autoimmune disease and an inflammatory disease, I heard splashes once about rheumatoid arthritis because my joints and my uh, hip were bothering me, my lower back. But what scared me about my lower back was that uh, lower back pain is one of the cardinal symptoms of prostate cancer. So I ran out and got myself screened for prostate cancer. And thank the Lord I don't have that. I had a UTI, and that's it's, what drove up my PSA. That's a urine infection for them. Yeah, right. that's what drove up my PSA, but the UTI, and somehow it was, uh, I was began to think, uh, since MS is an inflammatory arthritis, uh, some splashes of uh, people's opinions and all that stuff, which I try not to listen to. Yeah, how old are you? Huh? How old are you, may I ask? I'm 60 years of age. Okay. So, multiple sclerosis is a long topic to talk about, but what I was interested in your back pain and to see if there's a relationship with arthritis and multiple sclerosis. Um, you... None that I'm aware of, and it's very interesting. You mentioned rheumatoid arthritis. The one thing that rheumatoid arthritis does not affect is the lower back. So you can rest assured that you do not have rheumatoid arthritis. Um, and hopefully the multiple sclerosis is going to be under good control. So it well, sounds good. It, it's, you know, it's, uh, uh, thank be to the heavens, I'm not a wheelchair. Yes. Um, uh, but uh, mm -hmm. the only thing is that I, I had heard some splashes. I read something about rheumatoid arthritis mm. also being an autoimmune response mm -hmm. too in that in that mm -hmm. the white yeah. blood corpuscles or yeah. uh, white mm -hmm. blood cells uh, may even divert away from the myelin tissue and start to munch on your uh, your college and I became mm -hmm. I never really addressed that issue with a doctor because when I go to a doctor I try to stay focused on my n uh, central nervous system, and therefore I forget to ask the doctor, is it possible for it to uh, metamorphosize into mm -hmm. an attack on, uh, attack on the, uh, on the uh, college, on the okay. uh, inflammation in the college? Peter? But I do know arthritis is inflammation. But now we know that if they're not related, you could be getting arthritis, it's possible but not related to the multiple sclerosis, which is good, oh. good news. Okay. Peter, be well, and thank you. Call us back. Uh, thank you very much. Take care. Let's go to Jim now. Hi, Jim. Uh, hello. Hi. Where, where are you calling us from? Uh, Bay Ridge. Bay Ridge. Plenty of good restaurants out there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but What's your favorite? If you had one last meal and you had to eat in Bay Ridge, where would it be? Uh, well, actually, I don't eat any in Bay Ridge. <laughs> <laughs> I go to Park Slope because I like most of their restaurants there. You know, I, I grew up in Park Slope, so. Did you ever eat at Anthony's? Uh, no, but uh, I, I suggest this one, uh, Pete's downtown on Water Street. Nice. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a branch of Pete's, I think, in Bay Ridge, isn't there? There used I, to be. I, I don't it's know. not there anymore. The, sure. I, there used to be a Pete's or something like yeah. that. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I didn't know it was a franchise. Uh, These guys got three, two or three restaurants, right. yeah. yeah. Wow. But um, anyway, what can we do for you? Um, um, I have a bad arthritis of the knees, right, and uh, well, my shoulder too. But uh, recently I've been going through these shots of Synvix, mm -hmm. right, and uh, I just received my third shot. Of, you know, you get one a week, right? And, um, 
and there's been like a tad of difference as far as pain, and I just wanted to know where to go from there with it, you know. Okay, so I'm going to ask, just tell, I want to hear from Dr. Manning, because I know the knee is your area, one of your areas yeah, of expertise. I, I, I dabble with knees. Is it the left knee or the right <laughs> knee? <laughs> Whatever. Okay. Whatever. Right. Uh, may I ask how old you are, sir? Pardon me? May I ask your age? 59. And um, do you have any deformities like bowing or knocking to your knees? No. Okay. And um, do you have any narrowing of the joint space on x-ray? Have you reviewed x-rays with your doctor? Uh, yes, I did, uh, but no, no narrowing. Uh, uh, my shoulder, uh, uh, you know, and that's uh, the whole other smoke right there. You know, the cartilage is completely gone in my shoulder. Okay. But, you know. and, and I, I assume you're trying the injections because you didn't get any relief from oral medicine? Right, right. Okay. Yeah. How's your weight? My weight, uh, well, for my height, I, I think it's good, you know, I'm... Uh, Five seven, uh, 165 pounds. Oh, you're, you're good. And have you tried any physical therapy uh, exercises to strengthen the joints and work on the flexibility? Mm, yeah, a little bit, but you know, it, 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 I'm still in the pain. You know, like I, you know, I, I was under the impression from the doctor that these shots were like uh, the WD-40 of the knee. You know. <laughs> well, sometimes uh, they work well, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Usually, it's a combination of things that will get you some improvement like medication, either injections or um, oral. Uh, another option might be a steroid injection, which you can't do too often, but often is, is good for relief. Yeah. Uh, sometimes bracing or crutch or cane. Uh -huh. And um, it's going to be a combination of things if the arthritis isn't really, really bad by x-ray. Yeah. Do, do you think that uh, I, you know, I, I should continue or wait a little longer to see if this is going to work on the one knee because I'm already scheduled to do the other knee now, you know, being that I finished my third shot today? If it doesn't work on the first knee, I don't think there's going to be any magic on the second, but uh, you'd have to make that decision yourself. I, I'm just wondering, you know, whether I need more time, uh, you know, for it to work. Uh, you know, uh, I think I have nothing to lose by giving it more time, yeah. but uh, medicine generally wears out as time goes on as well. So um, that's, you have to kind of balance that. I, well, I think also with the Simvisc um, or Visco supplementation or Hyalgin um, or, or the other ones, Uflexus, Suparts, Orthovisc, it can take up to four months until after the final injection, uh, four weeks, excuse me, until you feel mm -hmm. a change. So if you just recently finished and it's not four weeks yet, I would suggest you wait before you go and do the other knee and see if this one works. If not, we're going to refer you to Dr. Manning for a <laughs> knee replacement, it sounds like. Oh but but uh, we're going to thank you a lot for the call, yeah. and okay. call, call back. Let us know how it worked out. All right. uh, okay? I think I got the answer to that uh, brain uh, uh, piece. But I, I'm sorry. I, oh, you do. If you hold on a question, am I allowed to take this answer? Okay. I'm looking to the uh, bosses here. Can okay, wait. They're ruling. They're shaking their head. Yes. So wait. Let me repeat the quiz. Mm -mm. The quiz is, again, Albert Einstein referred to this as the most complex thing in the world. What was it? And it's not the health care, Obama's health care bill. It's the <laughs> okay. okay, I believe it's E equals MC square. Can you repeat that? E equals MC square. No, 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 no. <laughs> But it's a good thought. It's a good thought. I like, the, I like the thought process. Okay, thanks. All right, be well. All Take right. care. Thank you. Oh, boy, I thought we had a winner there. You can feel the excitement <laughs> yeah. building in this room. I, it's palpable. Never know. My heart is palpated. Yeah. Palpated. <laughs> palpated. <laughs> but anyway, let's take a short break now to get a little rest from this. We'll come back recharged. We're going to talk about orthopedics. We're going to talk about rheumatology and ger geriatric medicine. Remember the quiz. Albert Einstein said this was the most complex thing in the world. The phone number is 718-499-6101 or this new Twitter thing, twitter.com slash net New York. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are orthopedics, rheumatology, and geriatric medicine. And with me, I have Dr. Reginald Manning, an orthopedic physician, Dr. Bruce Garner, a rheumatologist, and Dr. Emil Bakash, a geriatric medicine specialist. Now let's get right back to the phones. We're going to go to, let's go to John. Hi, John. Hi, Dr. Garner. How are you? Good. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Bensonhurst, Brooklyn. Uh, what, what, there's good restaurants in Bensonhurst. Oh, there's Fiorentino's. It's great on Avenue U. I like Fiorentino's. Very yeah. nice. And also, have you tried Tonio's right across the street from your hospital? Tonio's? Is that like um, a... little Italian restaurant. Yeah, the red sauce? 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, Very it's, nice place. They treat you nicely, too, when you go in there. Yeah, that's a great restaurant. He's, he's a great guy, yeah. I, you can have a lunch in there. You, you can eat, really. You, you don't want to go back to work, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's true, yeah. Dr. Garner, someone called earlier about the Red Lobster in the, uh, that shopping area on Earth. Yeah, what is that name it's of that? It's called Gateway. Gateway. Yeah, yeah. Is that Gateway? You sure about that? I yeah, so. I, th I think it is, That's yeah. Right. Gateway. I thought it had yeah. another, like something landing. It had a fancy name. All right, Gateway. Yeah. Gateway. Well, anyway, there's a, there's a great olive garden right next there also. I thought that's an oxymoron, Great Olive Garner. <laughs> 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 a a, a right. great restaurant also, the Olive Garner. Really nice, okay. But, uh, I have an answer, a possible answer to the quiz. Okay, wait, the quiz is, Albert Einstein said this was the most complex thing in the world. What is it? Could it be the human mind? No. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, I like the good thought. Another good thought there. Okay. Well, I love your show. Keep up the yeah. good work. You know what Dr. Backash thought, and I thought it was a good answer. <laughs> love. Great show. Yeah. Love. Very good. But it's not love. It is yeah. love. But anyway, continue yeah. to, you can continue to compliment the show while we talk. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's really great. I love it. Thank you. Can we you. do anything for you tonight? That's it. Be well. Have a great okay. week. Thanks for taking my call. Thank you. I know Dr. Backus, since the last show, you've become president of the medical staff. of Over 1,000 doctors, probably. Yes, there's about 1,300 doctors on staff. Just tell me what's, what's some of the um, challenging things you have to face. Well, it's a great hospital. Everybody's really very nice. And um, the hospital, it's nice to see it's reaching its potential. They're doing so many new innovative programs there. And it's, been, it's a great opportunity for the hospital. They have great leadership and great administration. So... Uh, we've done a lot of improvements in radiology, the department that you chair, yeah. and, uh, and with cardiology, they're doing amazing things, high-tech procedures that are just amazing. You couldn't imagine years ago. You know what's amazing to me? You see a hospital like St. Vincent's, you would thought it never could close, right? Always popular. And it can close, and it, it shows you it's scary, the fragile state of the hospitals. And I know mm. this particular New York Methodist this happens to be a strong hospital. Right. But it's, it's kind of sad because people lose places to go to get their care now. Sure. So, yeah. um, mm -hmm. People lose jobs as well. And jobs mm -hmm. are lost. Mm -hmm. We've got to do something to try and, uh, I don't know what's going to be the answer, but something's got to be done because uh, it could be in desperate straits. Anyway, let's go to Pat, who's Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Yes. How are you tonight? Fine. Where are you calling us from? Flatbush, Brooklyn. Oh, one of my favorite areas. This is where I live. So what do you like to eat? Um... I listened to one of the callers previously who spoke about vertigo. Yes. And I was very much interested in it. But they did not answer fully her question when she said, well, I don't do use caffeine and chocolate. What about if when you wash your hair? And I was waiting to hear the answer because I um, usually go to my hairdresser or even when I do it myself, water gets into the air and I had had vertigo a few years ago so I was interested to know if that has any part to play in getting vertigo. Okay we're going to get a direct answer to that question. Can the yes. getting water in the ear cause yes, vertigo? It can. Yes it can and, and water can and a cerumen plug or a wax plug in your ear can and that's easily treated by taking the wax or whatever foreign object is in the ear but yes it can. And I think part of getting your hair washed and water in the ear is not just the water in the ear, it's the position of your head when your hair is being washed. So there's other factors in play besides the water. It's also when your head is tilted back, the semicircular canals, the fluid in them shifts and crystals move into the canals and cause the sensation of vertigo. And when you put your head back, the crystals settle down into where they're supposed to be and the vertigo may pass. Or it could stay for a few hours. You think so yes, should, it can. Um, should she put plugs in if she goes to a beauty parlor and they're washing her ear? I think that's, if that bothers her, I think that's a reasonable thing to try is to, to bring some plugs with you. And because uh, it's inevitable that water is going to get in your ear. It would be very hard to avoid. So I think it's a good Thanks idea. so much for the call and for, for bringing that up. We appreciate it. Thank you so much. And one final thing generally. Yes. Um, when you reach the senior years, 65 plus, yes. should you switch from your primary care doctor to a geriatric doctor? No, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. In fact, I think you should stay with the doctor who knows you so well for all these years. And if he has any concerns, he can consult a geriatric physician. But most internists are well able to handle patients over 65. In fact, I would guess that most of their patients are over 65. There are some certain problems that he may not see as often as a geriatrician. In that case, you might go to one for a consultation. 
Thank you so much, and I appreciate the good work you're doing. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Now we have a first, a first Twitter entry. I don't know exactly how that works. Anybody know how that works? <laughs> no, I don't know. I anyway, this is the way it's, it, this is the way the Twitter came in. I have chronic back pain. Is it related to my mattress or pillow? <clears throat> so interesting. We don't know. Reggie. Well, I would say if the mattress uh, is old, that might be a possibility. The easiest way to determine that is to change the mattress. If that gives you relief, then you solve the problem. But very often you may have some underlying problems like arthritis, muscle um, strains, um, uh, maybe overweight. Uh, but the easiest way to check the mattress if it's old is to change it and see if that makes a difference. I think that's reasonable. And um, we have one other thing. We have a web question. So I'd like to show people are sending in web questions. Um, they're saying I have two problems, one for me and one for my son. Okay, for me... I have black scars under my armpits. What do I use to make them go away? Is it serious? So mm. discoloration of the skin under the armpits, what does he use? And for the, son, um, the second question, she's got a st actually she got a third question in here. She goes to the podiatrist to get her foot scraped and uh, keeps coming back. What is the cause of this? Is it something serious? Mm -hmm. And her son, she asks about his allergies. So let's, let's do the discoloration under the arm first. Yeah, discoloration under the arm can be a condition called acanthosis nigricans, which is darkening of the skin underneath the armpits or on the side of the neck. And it can be a sign of some internal metabolic disorder like diabetes. So you should be checked for that. Your blood should be taken and, and checked for, for you know, your blood sugar to make sure it's not too high. If everything turns out okay and there's nothing abnormal and it's just pigmentation under the arms, there are uh, creams that can be used, bleaching uh, creams that are in the uh, quinine family, that hydroquinolone uh, ointment that you can put, put on and it will bleach the skin. But uh, the first thing is to check, you know, make sure all your chemistries are okay, including your blood sugar. Good. And Dr. Manning, what about the scraping of the foot? I know podiatrists do that, but maybe you can enlighten us into what do you think? It, it, it may be related to um, metatarsalgia, uh, where as we age, we tend to lose some of the cushioning of the soft tissue on the sole of the foot. And if the metatarsal head is uh, pressing against the hard, a hard surface like the ground, you will get a callus. And as long as you have that situation, the callus will, will recur. So you're treating the, the, the symptom um, and not the problem. You may need some shoe inserts or, or, a, or surgery to correct that. And then um, just quickly, the son has um, allergies to pollen. I would suggest one thing you do is read Dr. Stephen Garner's excellent article in last week's tablet, or was it this week's tablet on hay fever? That hay fever last week. Yeah. Last week for those you know, keeping score at home. It was <laughs> the last week. But anyway, thanks a lot for that. And we'll go to Carol now, who's on our regular phone line. Hi, Carol. It's a high-tech show. Yeah. Carol? Hi, Dr. Garner. Hi, where are you calling us from? Uh, Marine Park. Marine Park. Anything out there? In the, there used to be the Madison Steakhouse out there? Madison, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. You ever go out to um, Jan's out there? Jan's, the King's Plaza Diner. Yeah, remember Jan's? The ice remember Jan's, Jan's, the ice cream parlor? Yeah, what was the number one thing anybody thinks about Jan's? It was the kitchen sink. Kitchen, kitchen sink. sink. You go in there with, with six guys and you'd the eat this. Yeah. That was great. And your free birthday Sunday. Oh, yeah, but it's your, your birthday. birthday. That's you're right. Always, yeah. yeah, I used to be able to make up cards showing my birthday. Was there. <laughs> <laughs> what can we do for you? Dr. Garner, I talked to you a few months back, and I was telling you that I had a knee replacement done four years ago. Oh, can you make had, it a little louder? I had an infection in oh, my knee replacement. Knee, okay. Knee replacement. So I went to this doctor, and he says that um, he was going to put an antibiotic spacer in my right knee, which he did. And then right after that, he put a pick line in my left arm. About a week later, my hand swelled up, and it, it so happened that I got a blood clot going into my, the, the vena cava uh -huh. near, the, uh, near, near my heart. So then my doctor says, I will try it on the right arm. And I got another blood clot from there, which went from my right arm into my two lungs. Now I, uh, I'm supposed to be going for surgery at the end of May to put in the knee replacement. I'm a little nervous about going through this being that I have the blood clots. Right. So now, well, let me ask, let me ask Dr. Manning, because you've got the expert here on this. Dr. Manning? Yeah, that, that's a tough situation. Um, generally, you have to clean up the infection before you can place a new knee in. Mm -hmm. And um, it seems like you're high risk uh, for developing blood clots. Uh, you can also develop blood clots after primary surgery or revision surgery like you're having. And uh, it's a tough situation. If you anticoagulate, you're going to bleed more, and that could predispose you to, to developing an infection. 
So um, it, it's, a, it's a tough situation. Um, I don't have any easy answers. Mm. I'm sorry. No answers, huh? Should no she get a second answers. opinion or just uh, well, uh, is this a second opinion, basically? Well, I'm going to go uh, Thursday for, uh, I'm going to a hematologist Thursday. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going for an echocardiogram. Okay. Oh, I also have the uh, Greenfield uh, filter. Okay. I have that in me also uh, to prevent more blood clots from coming on. And uh, if they clear me for surgery, I'm going to go for it and see what happens. I, 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 you know. It seems like you've gotten most of the precautions, um, so I, I think they haven't left the stone unturned. Of course, there are no guarantees, but, but I wish you good luck with that. Thank, Thank you, you, Carol. Feel well. Thank you very much. Bye Take bye. care. I see Wendy is on line three. Wendy? Hi. How are you doing this evening? I'm fine. I'm from Sheepshead Bay, and there's no good restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Lundy's used to be there. And, well, Lundy's was... That was in the day. Okay, yeah. my, my Wait, wait, do you have the answer to the quiz? My husband said it's a woman. Did you ask him uh, who he was with in the room? <laughs> what, what, was, what, was the, what was that, like Jeopardy? I don't know. What was the question? <laughs> the question was, what is the most complex thing in the world? Yeah. A woman. It absolutely could be, but it's not the answer. Not what I, Mark Twain said. You're but kidding. It, no, but he, he made it, I think it's a good guess. Wow. Is it okay? you, you know what's going to happen when I hang up the phone, right? Uh -oh. I know. I, uh, gonna... He's going to get an orthopedic problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good try. Thank you. But where, you're okay? No, no health problems? Uh, no, but I'm going to beat my husband. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but try again later, okay? Okay, thank Take you. Care. We now have Alan who thinks he might have the answer. Hi, Alan. Hi, how are you? Where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Brighton Beach. Brighton Beach, a great area. I love walking on the boardwalk there in the summer. Is it's that safe amazing? now for a change. It's what? It's safe. It's safe, yeah. It's, it's really, a, it's a safe neighborhood. And what's that, Tatiana, that restaurant there? Uh, you know something? To be honest with you, I don't eat anywhere in the neighborhood. If I go anywhere, I go to Tio Pepe's on, uh, where is it, Bay Ridge Bay Avenue Ridge, and 3rd Avenue. The best. Yeah. Two the interesting best. things. I know Neil Diamond's parents owned a dry goods store called uh, Diamond's. Yeah, absolutely. Neil Sadak is from the neighborhood. I'm a Lincoln boy. I've been here all my life, and I'm 60 years our, old. Our father was a Lincoln boy, went to Lincoln. Everybody went to Lincoln. Yeah, anybody Lincoln's was anybody school, went to Lincoln. Do you remember um, Neil Sadak? They lived in the Seacoast Tower. I lived there, too. My grandmother actually drove. He was a cab driver, and she, he drove her down to Florida. Sadak is used to be a Frankfurt, a place right off the boardwalk. Wow. Remember Shotskins and Mrs. Stahl's conditions? You know what it is now? What? It's a, uh, a uh, blimp, not blimpies, what's the physician? Subway. The, Subway. Yeah. Oh, mm, that's a shame. I think I have an answer to your question. Okay, sir. so what is the most complex thing in the world, according to Mark Twain? God. Ah. Good, good answer, but not the answer. Wow, I thought I got that. Can I ask you oh, excuse me, excuse me. It's Albert Einstein, not Mark Twain. <laughs> I know, I got you that. You want to change the answer? <laughs> uh, was, yeah, Mark Twain could have been how to get his check from uh, his uh, publishers. Right. Uh, getting close. Different story. A little hint. You're getting close. What can we do for you? Okay. I, I, went, I, had, uh, I went for a routine colonoscopy, and it was a disaster. I called the hospital, and they, they gave me somebody. Instead of going to my, my primary care doctor, I decided to call the hospital because I had a medical plan that my doctor didn't, wasn't under, my, my PMD uh -huh. wasn't under. So I went there. The first time I went, I woke up in the middle of the procedure. I bet they didn't have an anesthesiologist, and I was uncomfortable. He said, come back again. The second time I came, um, I prepared for the procedure, and he says, well, you need cardiac clearance. I said, well, you spoke to my cardiologist, and he said, well, I can't do it. So I said, all right, I'll come back again. The third time I came, they said they didn't have an anesthesiologist. You know, you can imagine preparing for that test, which is a nightmare three times. In any event, he did the procedure. They found polyps. They took them out. Thank God everything was benign. This is five years ago. About six, six months later, I ended up getting very sick, and I ended up in the hospital, and they told me I had what was called the gas gangrene. And I, uh, what they had to do was they had to put right in my, in my groin a uh, nine-inch by four-inch deep cut and they had to leave it open and drain the groin. And I, it was like that for about a month and a half. And nobody has ever told me to this day what caused the gas gangrene. To are you diabetic? No, not at all. Okay, how old are you? I, I just turned 60. 60, so he said obviously problems with his colonoscopy. Mm. Then well, no, I went, it was the first time I ever went. I no, never had any problems before that. No, no, but I'm saying you had, the, it was, um, took a while to get the colonoscopy completed. And then is there any 
relation to this gas grain, green in the groin area, right? Well, yeah, and now, since then, this is, we're talking about three years, since then, I, I always have a constant, uh, every time I, I eat one meal a day, I feel on the right side of my groin, like a, a f- it's full. And in order to go to the bathroom, I have to have, uh, use a, you know, a laxative. Okay. Um, I, I, would, I could run around the panel, but I don't think there could be a, rela- it could, could be a coincidence, actually. But, uh, it, does, it doesn't sound like it's related, but you may have had some sort of skin infection that happened through some sort of minor cut. You may not even notice it in the groin and it got infected. That can affect the whole you know, perineal area in the groin, and that can cause like this very bad infection. But the kind of organism that causes uh, gas gangrene usually isn't found um, you know, doing a colonoscopy, and, and the, the timing isn't right either. So. But, well, I don't think it, it's related. I, I, do, I, do share your, yeah. I do share your upsetment about having to be prepped three times. That's terrible. I mean, that's... Yeah, no, the strange thing was, when I got back the, you know, the, the information from the insurance company, it said major abdominal surgery, and, and I wasn't aware of anything of that nature. You know, nobody ever told me I had abdominal surgery. He said maybe I had an ingrown here, and I, and I never had anything like that. I know that. I, I'm a... I'm a, I'm a I'm an attorney, and I handle, uh, you know, I, ha- I hate to say it, but I handle uh, medical malpractice. I know there was nothing like that, and it's, be- it's beyond the time where I could bring a lawsuit. I just want to feel better. Yeah, I don't think it was related at all. We don't think. The panel is in agreement on that, but, um, you know, it's always good. We don't have all the facts, and sometimes if you want to go for a second opinion, although at this point, as you said, it's, you know, you just want to know for your own good. I'm scared to death to go for a colonoscopy. That's the problem. Yeah. I, why don't you make an, an appointment to see one of the doc, another doctor? Yeah, and I have I have a very good doctor. It's one that I trust. Uh, very good. But anyway, thanks a lot. All right, guys, have a great. Your show is great. I love Thank you lot. very much. Thank you, gentlemen. We got we have um, Edie. I understand. Let's see, Edie. We got, we have, uh, Hi, Edie. That's the doctor. May I have your name? Yeah. I'm, what is? Okay, that's behind the scenes acting. You don't <laughs> always hear there and ask the doctor. So Edie got to call us back because um, I'll try it again with Edie. Edie? No, I have a tough time with Edie. I'm sorry about that. Let's go now to line one for mystery caller. Hello? Hello. Hi, who is this, please? This is Kenesha from East New York, Brooklyn. Kenesha, I like that name. What does it mean? Uh, I don't know. It's just <laughs> my name. <laughs> All you know when somebody yells Kanisha, yeah. you come. Very <laughs> few Kanishas in the class, so it's not one of those names no, like Kanisha's Alan. is nice. I no. like that name. Uh, Where are you calling from? East New York, Brooklyn. Ah. Uh, any, any, you know, that, isn't that getting a, like a little gentrification, that area? Getting some artists moving in there? Mm, I don't know about that. It's just a nice area. Are there any good restaurants? No, it's just quiet. That, that's it. All right, quiet's good. You, you like quiet. When you go to sleep, you don't want a lot of noise around, right? Yeah, true. So what can we do for you? Um, I have a question about my ribs. I broke my ribs in 2007, and I was in the hospital maybe for the whole month of January, and, you know, they told me that I was healed after that. And maybe in 2008, I fell down my brother's steps, and after that, I've been having excruciating pain on my left side. I went to the hospital. They took blood tests, everything. I even had a colonoscopy as well. I had polyps removed from my stomach. And the pain was gone, but now the pain comes back every night. And I've been to the emergency room over and over, and they tell me that there's nothing wrong with me. Hmm. So uh, any, any thoughts from the panel? Um, my dad is related to the wrist. Um, usually wrists heal in about six weeks. Unless you had a bad fracture that involved the joint surface, you uh, wouldn't be predisposed to developing a post-traumatic arthritis. Even if you did that, it shouldn't give you a flank pain or side pain. So I'm at a, at a loss to explain the, uh, the side pain. Yeah, that's watch. exactly what they said, flank pain, but I don't understand what it is. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Your flank pain just refers to the location of where your pain is. It doesn't really address what the cause is or, or what's happening inside. I mean, it could be due to a lot of different things. It could be an injury of your back. You could have damaged your disc kidneys. in your back. Um, you could have a kidney stone. You could have pulled one of your um, back muscles. I mean, a lot of different things. So you would need really to define it a little better, some imaging studies to, to look and see if it's your back or if it's, there's anything wrong to your kidneys. Did you have a, a renal contusion? Did you, you know, bruise your kidney you know, during the injury or anything like that? So you, you need a little bit of further workup, none of which is dangerous. And you know, it can be done 
you know, by your regular doctor. Okay. We hope that helps you. Thank glad, you. Glad you called us. Thanks. Okay, now we may have another winner, a possible winner here. Terry? Yes. Hi, Terry. Evening. Where are you calling us from? Lefferts Manor. Oh, where's that? Where's that? Um, uh, not far from Prospect Park. Very nice. Oh, is that where those old houses, you have a landmark area near there? Well, Lefferts Manor is a landmark Beautiful. area. Beautiful. That, that is an amazing neighborhood that people mm -hmm. don't yeah. know. Have any, you guys been there? Yes. yes. Yeah. It's, it, you have to know how to get there. Mm -hmm. then you, it's an amazing neighborhood. Well, you think you might have the answer, Terry? Yes. Um, I agree with the caller that said a woman, but I believe Albert Einstein said income tax. Wow, that's I, I, absolutely correct. The income tax. Income tax. Get, Bravo. Very good. I'd stand up, only I have a rip in my pants. <laughs> but, uh, so so what, uh, what, how did you possibly get that? I just remember that from woman. years ago for some reason. That is amazing. You know, you have a puzzle master is right away. We're going to get your name. You haven't won this before. No, I haven't. Oh, you got a beautiful handmade plaque imported from Japan. This one's beautiful. You're going to love this. And people, do you have a spot to hang it? Yeah, give I'll it to me. I'll take it out to my wife. <laughs> no. Yes. You got, but is there any rule? Can I ask the boy, is there any rule that says that somebody related to anybody on the show cannot be a winner? I didn't that, know it. No? The boss says it's okay. <laughs> I'll take it home. Do we take it? You have a spot above the bed? Yeah, she'll find it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a great, a great answer. That's absolutely right. So um, I'm, I'm overwhelmed here. Yeah, overwhelmed. So am I. Amazing. Yeah. I'm sweating. I'm well, sweating. at least she's watching. We yeah. had another commercial. I go to commercial, but it's yeah. a slow season. So. <laughs> but anyway, thanks so much for the call. You're welcome. Thanks for letting your husband come on the show. <laughs> okay? Thank you. Have a good evening. Be well. That was a good one, Reggie. Yeah, I never would have spent it. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to pick it husband. Sure. <laughs> Hi, Edie. Hello. Hi, Edie. We almost lost you. I know, I know, you did lose me. All of a sudden, the phone just went like, oh, and, I, and, I, and it said um, line not connected or some, something like that. Uh, anyway, hi. It has a happy <laughs> How ending. are you? I'm the giggle girl. <laughs> oh, the giggle girl. I uh, like that. And you know, the giggle high we talk about. The, <laughs> see that? Makes um, it? <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Um, the question I have is about um, vitamin D deficiency, which my husband was was diagnosed with, oh, and oh. I have, um, I'd like to know what causes that. No. Okay. But with, vitamin uh, D deficiency. Vitamin D is in David. <laughs> uh, well, vitamin D um, um, is metabolized, or the, the precursor is metabolized in the liver and the kidneys before mm -hmm. it becomes active. Okay. So if you have a problem either okay. absorbing it or um, metabolizing it uh, with kidney disease or um, liver disease, that can be a cause. Uh -huh. uh, the other factor is um, sunlight very often is, is, is effective in uh, converting vitamin D in the skin. If you're not getting a lot of sun um, or your dark skin and don't, don't get a lot of penetration, that might be an issue as well. Uh -huh. But these, they're, they're tests you can uh, to do to work that up, and I guess medical people would know sure. that a little better one, than that. One thing which is very interesting, Edie, is yeah. that there was an article which appeared last week which related low vitamin D levels to heart disease. So we know that vitamin D is important to prevent osteoporosis. Uh -huh. We know that it's also important in certain kinds of arthritis, mm -hmm. and we know that it's probably important in both cardiovascular disease and neurologic disease. Right. It's actually very common in all age groups. So vitamin D deficiency, they raised the recommendation from 1,000 units to even higher. So now we're recommending 1,000, 2,000 mm -hmm. units a day. So it's a good idea to take supplements anyway, and people should have their vitamin D levels checked. Edie, thanks so much for the call. Thank very much too. Let me tell you a real quick thing, okay? I don't know if we're still on the air, but I'll tell you real fast. Three women die in a car crash. Not funny, but anyway. So they go to heaven, <laughs> and St. Peter meets them at the gate, and they just say, he says, come on in, and there's all ducks all over heaven. And then he said, we have one rule, don't step on any ducks. He said, if you do, you'll be punished. So the first lady, boom, steps on a duck. I'm going to make it really fast. And next thing you know, she's changed to this really, really ugly man. And she's like, oh my goodness, this is worse than hell. So the second one goes like a week, and she does the same thing, steps on a duck, boom, change to an ugly man. I'm telling this really fast. The <laughs> third one, she says, I have to be really careful. Oh, my gosh, I don't want to spend the rest of my life like the rest of my heaven or whatever, afterlife like this. So she's going along, she's going along, she's doing really well, and she's really careful. And all of a sudden, poof, there's this gorgeous Adonis chain to her. And she turns to him, she says, oh, my goodness, what did I do to deserve this? And he says, 
I don't know about you ladies, but all I did was step on a dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I just wanted to share that. Yeah, that with you. It helped us all. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Edie. You're welcome. Have a great week. I can't believe it. There's no more time. We got callers, and we're out of time for this show. That's it. Um, I want to thank Dr. Reggie Manning, Dr. Bruce Garner, Dr. Emil Backash for coming in, giving them their time. Dr. Um, Emil Backish, I don't want to forget, throw a shout out to you two kids. Oh, Emil sure, and Peter. Sure, sure. I'll say hello to Emil and Peter. Doing My their two homework. Sons at home. Doing their homework, right? I'm sure. And I remember it's good to remember to be proactive about your own health, right? That means speaking to your doctors about your concerns, going for second or third opinions. In the meantime, continue to watch the net and visit our website at netny.net slash ask the doctor. Here you can check out past quizzes, submit your thoughts on the forum, or just watch past episodes. For those who like to tweet, follow us at twitter.com at net New York period. The period's the end of actually the sentence. Then, <laughs> you, thank you for all your calls. And I'd like to thank Linda Lapitosa, again, our quiz master, for the quiz this week. And I'll see you all next week when we will discuss rheumatology, cardiology, and family medicine. So goodbye, stay healthy, and I'll see you in the tablet. <laughs>